Hi everybody, welcome back to the Sim Hanger. My name is Mark. Thanks very much for watching and let's get started. For those of us on PC, well we can just copy and load up a flight plan. But if you're on an Xbox console, well you can't, because it's a closed system. Perhaps you want to join a fly-in, a community event. Maybe you've seen a flight plan on Discord or elsewhere and would love to get that into the Xbox so you can fly and enjoy the route. In this video we'll look at two different methods of how we can plan in that route and most importantly we'll take the guesswork out of those user or customized waypoints. There are a number of other ways that this can be done and we'll touch on those at the end of the video. But the two that we're covering today probably have less steps and greater simplicity than others. We won't be covering all the basics of flight planning in SIM via the world map. So if you're looking for more information in that regard, then check out this video. Link in the notes below. You will need access to a PC, but it doesn't need to be a powerful one. An old laptop laying around will do just nicely. Boot up that PC and in your favorite search engine, type in Little Nav Map. Little Nav Map is a flight planning tool. There it is under GitHub. Let's click on that. It's a widely used application and it's freeware. And of course you can donate to the developer if you want to. Select Releases and Downloads from the top menu. And under Direct Downloads, select the version that you want. Windows 64-bit for most. Mac OS and Linux. It'll download as a zip file, place it somewhere on a suitable hard drive and unzip or extract the contents. There's no installer. The executable is littlenavmap.exe. I recommend you make a shortcut to your desktop and then let's run the program. And when it opens, you'll see something like this. Today we're only going to cover the basics and this is not a tutorial on using littlenavmap. There's a ton of tutorials out on YouTube already. If you're looking for more information for this application, then check out those videos. Right at the top of the application, there's a menu bar, and our first port of call will be the View menu. From the submenus, we're looking for Projection. Make sure it's on Mercantor Map Projection. And below that is Theme, and to follow along with this tutorial, use Open Topo Map. Maybe you've downloaded a flight plan from a community flight that's coming up, or a friend has shared one with you. Well, we can now bring that into Little Nav Map. Back to the top menu, select File. New flight plan would be selected if you wanted to create your own flight plan, but we're going to select Open Flight Plan. Navigate to where your flight plan has been saved, and this application can display two types of files. This is a file created in Little Nav Map. And this is a .pln file, the same as used by Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're going to choose the .pln file. And it loads up into Little Nav Map. And we can now see it displayed in the Map section. We can now go in and have a closer look at the route. Use the zoom bar within the application or the scroll wheel on your mouse. And here we can take a closer look at the flight plan. The respective legs are also displayed on the left hand side. If it doesn't show, then click on Flight Plan. As we look at the flight plan, we can see there are a number of custom waypoints, nav fixes, and airports as well. Putting those into Microsoft Flight Simulator is not a major problem, but the custom waypoints and some of the nav fixes may not exist in Sim. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how to get the information you need. But first, there's one critical step we need to take, so the data can be read by Microsoft Flight Simulator. From the top toolbar, select Tools, then right at the bottom, select Options from the sub-menu. This details all our preferences, but all we're interested in today is Units. Select that. And on the right-hand side, a number of options will be shown. And here we want to select Coordinates. By default, it's set up as Degrees, Minutes and Seconds which surprisingly won't work when entered in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Here's an example of them. So let's change that by selecting the small down arrow and it will display a number of different options. The one we want is Latitude and Longitude with Sign, second from the bottom. Select that, then Apply. Once again, we can see here how the information has changed. 
and this information can be read by Microsoft Flight Simulator without any further editing. We're done here, let's move on. In this flight plan, we can see that a number of the user-defined points have been renamed. Sandbank Point, for example, is a user-defined point on the map, which has simply been renamed. Very often they will not have been renamed. Let's create another waypoint quickly, just to demonstrate what I'm saying for clarity. I've picked this point here, add position to flight plan, and the new position comes up as WP or waypoint 1. There could be many different waypoints in a flight plan. And as mentioned earlier, you can rename it if you want to. That waypoint's not part of our plan, so we just delete that. And now that we're able to identify the user waypoints, let's move on. There are also a number of nav fixes in the plan. The one highlighted here, for example. These are nav fixes as part of an airway. They have an identifying number. And by selecting this purple triangle in the top menu bar, you can opt whether to display them or not. You can do the same for NDBs and VOR stations and so on. For our plan, we want them displayed. There are a number of different options and ways to import nav data into LittleNavMap. Covering that's beyond the scope of this video, but as mentioned before, if required then watch other tutorials on YouTube on how to do it. To create a flight plan in Microsoft Flight Simulator, we need to start an endpoint first. And here we can see on the left hand side our starting point is Grand Canyon Village Airport, Kilo Golf, Romeo Yankee, make a note of that. And our endpoint is U07, which has the endearing name of Bullfrog Basin. We'll make a note of that as well. In Sim, we head to the world map and time to start entering our flight plan. And we start by entering our departure and arrival airports as noted in Little Nav Map. Kilo Golf, Romeo Yankee, Grand Canyon Village, that's it. A little bit dark, let me just uh, adjust the time. That's our departure point, and now to enter our arrival. That was U or Uniform 07. Into that comes up Bullfrog Basin, that's perfect. We now have a start and end point. As mentioned previously, any flight plan that you create in Microsoft Flight Simulator must first have a arrival and departure point. All good so far, back to Little Nav Map, and let's have a look at Step 2, or Leg 2. And we see that's to another airport, Grand Canyon National Park Airport, Kilo Golf, Charlie November. OK, let's enter that. We saw from the flight plan it's only about 6 or 7 nautical miles northwest of our starting point. So we can zoom in, and we should be able to find it quite easily. There it is. Very often it won't be that easy to find, so another way is to use the search option. We know the ICAO code, so let's enter that in the search box. Kilo Golf, Charlie November. There it is, let's select that. And it zooms us in. As it's a known point, hover over the icon, left mouse button, and we're going to select Add. And it's now added to the flight plan. OK, that's done. On to leg 3, which we know is a user-defined point, so that should be a little bit more challenging. But we're going to make it easy. The user-defined point is Sandbank Point, as highlighted. Now we'll move our mouse over Sandbank Point, and again with the right mouse button. We'll click on the point to display a menu, and a whole lot of options come up. We want to head all the way down to the bottom to More, select that, and from the sub-menu, select Jump to Coordinates. And the latitude and longitude in the format that we chose earlier is shown there. Make a note of these and write them down, exactly as shown, which is 36.10487 space minus 111.82845. Note there's only one space. If you're on the other side of the world, well, the second figure would be a positive figure, but it wouldn't say plus. There would just be one space between the two sets of numbers. Hope that's clear. Now we've got our coordinates, we head back to our Xbox, to our partially completed flight plan, and in the search box we now want to enter the coordinates exactly as they were from Little Nav Map. Select the search box, enter the coordinates, and if you've entered them correctly, a custom point will be displayed in the search results. You'll see Microsoft Flight Simulator has converted the data back to 
degrees, minutes and seconds. We now want to go to that point on the map, select it with the mouse, and in the world map will automatically be zoomed into that exact location. Without clicking anywhere else on the map, select Add. And that waypoint is now added. Well, no wonder the waypoint is called Sambang Point. And if we want to, we can reconfirm the accuracy by checking it in Little Nav Map. Using video editing, I'm able to overlay the Little Nav Map with what we see on the Xbox. And we can do a quick visual check. Just looking at the course of the Colorado River, and that looks just about spot on. We can have confidence that our method has worked accurately. Turning back now to Little Nav Map, we see that our next point is a nav fix Victor Papa 799. Now many VORs, NDBs and nav fixes are included in Microsoft Flight Simulator. If they are, you can just find it and select that as part of the route. To do that within Sim, you need to open the filters from the menu at the bottom, scroll all the way to the end and ensure nav aids, fix and R nav positions are on. These will then be visible on our world map. Make sure the search box is empty. We'll just zoom out here and we should be able to pick up something. There we are, there's a nav point. And it's always a good idea to have these enabled. Turning back to little nav map. And in this instance, I know that Victor Papa 799 is not in the Xbox version of the sim. But no problem, we can treat it as a custom waypoint and do exactly what we did before. Right click, select more and jump to coordinates. And once again, let's take a note of these, as we'll need to enter them into the sim. Back to Microsoft Flight Simulator on the Xbox, and once again we're going to the search box, and we're going to enter the details exactly as we did before. Search results, display in degrees, seconds and minutes. We select that point, and once again, add it to the flight plan. The point is on the crest of a mountain, just to the west of the Colorado River. And once again, we can do a comparison to Little Nav Map. To complete our flight plan, well, we just follow the same process, selecting and adding those points that are within the sim, and using Little Nav Map for any nav or rnav fixes that are missing, and any user custom waypoints. Little Nav Map is not an unduly demanding program, and would run quite comfortably, for example, on an i3 processor. There is another way to do all of this, but for you it may be more hassle than it's worth, particularly initially, but for what it's worth, here it is. I have the Premium Deluxe Edition of Microsoft Flight Simulator, but I'm assuming this applies across the board to the Deluxe and Standard versions as well. You may or may not be aware that your copy of Microsoft Flight Simulator is a single-use license but can be used on multiple different platforms. For example, I have it on PC and on Xbox, and I also have it on my iPad on cloud gaming. And I bought only one copy of Microsoft Flight Simulator from Microsoft Store. Not sure if this would apply to the purchase on the Steam platform. If you know, pop a comment below. Anyway, back to the point. The single-use license means you can only fly with your registered copy on one platform at a time. So I can't use my Xbox and my PC running Microsoft Flight Simulator simultaneously. But I can alternate between the two. If you're using Microsoft Flight Simulator on your Xbox and you have an old PC laying around that has enough space to accommodate Microsoft Flight Simulator, you can install it on the PC as well. You don't have to run it on the PC. It may not even be capable of doing so. But what you can do then is import a flight plan into the PC, save it to Xbox Cloud Storage, it will then be available to the Xbox. Let me demonstrate. I'm currently on the PC and I'm just going to generate a quick flight plan, select my departure and arrival points, and for purposes of expediency I'm just going to select one other point, Simon Bolivar International will do, I've added that. And now I can save it. Select more from the bottom menu. Various options display. We're going to select load and save. And I'm going to select save to Xbox Cloud Storage. I get the option to give it a name. I'll call it Xbox Test. 
and in this instance I'll save it as a .pln file. If you're wondering about the .flt, this is the same as a .pln, but saves your aircraft and weather data as well. With a .pln, you can fly that flight plan with any aircraft. Make sure your sims are synced. I'm now on the Xbox. I'm going to select load and save again, and load, and a list of loadable flight plans comes up. And there is xboxtest.pln. I can select that flight and it will automatically load into the sim. And there's our two-leg flight. And with it, it would have brought along any of the waypoints. This is the quickest and easiest method. But of course, you've got the hassle of the install initially and future updates and so on. But it is an option available to you. There are a number of other alternatives, which include saving the flight plan as a text file, then utilizing Pastebin, which is accessible via Microsoft Edge, and you can access Edge via the Xbox. You'll be able to access the data for the various flight plan legs, but once again it may mean editing and copying for manual entry into Xbox. And my thanks go to Dan Lance, a member of my Discord, for bringing this to my attention and for the assistance he has afforded other members by defining the process on the Discord. And also I wish to express my appreciation, as always, to Dr. Oculari, once again on the Simhanger Discord, for sharing his views on how he does it. But perhaps the main point here is there are ways round this restriction for the Xbox, and I hope that you found this video useful and instructive, and if you know of any other better ways to do it, hey, please let us know in the comments below for the benefit of the community. As always, thank you very much for watching. Stay well, look after yourself. See you again soon and bye for now.